This is Ken Roberts inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, crime photographer. Ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, The Coffin. Early afternoon, the quiet, restful reception room of uh, a casket company. The street door opens and two hard-eyed men enter. From a glass-enclosed inner office, another man emerges and... <clears throat> Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi. You the boss here? Uh, well, uh, I'm the uh, sales manager. Uh, Cook is my name. Cook? <laughs> Yeah, that's a hot name for a coffin salesman, Andy. Ain't it, Foot? <laughs> yes, uh, so I'm often told. You want to see some samples of your uh, product? I want to buy a coffin. Uh, you are um, a mortician, of course. A what? Uh, he means undertaker, boy. No, Cookie, I'm no undertaker. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but we sell only to the trade. You mean a guy's got to be an undertaker in order to buy one of your plush line boxes? <sighs> That's our rule. Rules are made to be busted, mister. I want a coffin. I got the dough to pay for it. So show me one of your fanciest models. I want the guy I'm buying it for to have the best. Uh, after he's dead. Uh, yeah, when a guy kicks off, boys, you'll all the best. You said it, Foots. Uh, you, uh, you want a casket for somebody who, uh, who, uh, isn't yet dead? He isn't even sick yet. I, uh... I don't understand. You don't have to. Just show us your boss. Yes, but... Uh, First, wait, wait, I'll I, give uh, you the name and address of the guy you're to send it to. Uh, He's Nick Maddock. Yeah, oh, Nick Maddock? And he lives in the Manor Hall Apartments. <laughs> Nick Maddock is... is the notorious gang leader. Notorious? Uh, it's Jack believes what he reads in the newspapers, boys. Yeah, it seems that way, Mike. Look, don't fall for that cheap publicity stuff, Cookie. Yeah, yeah. he has no professional standing. They're like the boss here, for instance. Our boss is the real goods. He's Andy Grollo. Uh, uh, you're and Andrew G Grollo? Uh-huh. Guess you didn't recognize uh, me from my pictures in the papers. Now, well, I... Uh, now, you, Cookie, uh, let's see your coffins. We're in kind of a hurry. You see, this punk Nick Madoff just might be a morgue case. Tonight. <laughs> Thomas Williams, this coffin salesman cook, knew Andy Grollo's reputation, so he took little Andy in his hood back into the display room and let him pick out a silver-plated slumber box, which Andy paid for cash on the line. And as soon as the mobsters were gone, Cook phoned the nearest precinct station and was sent here to headquarters, where I heard his story in person. And it's a front-page story, Captain Logan. Yeah, which this lug is probably given to all the papers in. I haven't given it to any paper, Casey, including yours. Including ours? What I've just told you two is off the record for the time being. Oh, I... Captain. Oh, now look here, Off Cal, the can't... record, I said. I'm not going to have any press break on this until I'm sure what it's all about. Well, it's easy enough to figure what it's all about. There's been a long-standing feud between Andy Grollo and Nick Maddock, and now it's come to a head, and Grollo's planning to remove Maddock. No, it isn't that easy to figure, Miss Williams. No, I'll say it isn't. Little Andy is one of the smartest crooks I know of. When he pulls such a grandstand play as the one at that coffin shop, he's planning anything but the obvious. Well, Logan, what did you do when you heard the story, huh? I had to do the obvious for my own protection. Well, you ordered your cops to make a roundup of Andy and his mob. Sure. And so far, we've pulled in every known member of the gang, except Andy and the gorilla who went with him to that casket sales room. You got Maddox protected, of course. As much as I can protect his type. I got cops spotted around his apartment house. He won't let him inside the apartment itself. He knows about Andy Grollo ordering a coffin for him. Yeah, I told him myself. I had to, again, for my own protection. And did Nick Maddock do a burn-up? Which gave me another worry. He's undoubtedly sent guys out to gun for Andy, and if we don't find that little rat first... Yeah, then... a war is now definitely on between the Maddock gang and the Grollo gang. Which means you won't be able to keep this coffin story off the record very long, Captain Long. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right, Miss Williams. Not until shooting actually starts, I'm not going to further Andy Grollo's plans, whatever they are, by allowing publicity for a yard he must have wanted to hit the papers. Could only dope out the little rat's scheme. Is uh, Nick Maddox staying inside his apartment? Yes, he's too yellow to want to leave it while Andy's still in the loose. 
He's safely locked in with half a dozen of his muscle men and that gal friend of his, Inez Kelly. Well, she'll be his best protector. That Inez is really tough. Mm, but attractive, though, Annie. A pulchritudinous bundle of feminine charm. Huh. <laughs> well, if you ask me... Oh, excuse me. Homicide Bureau, Captain Logan speaking. Yes, Maddie. Maddie, Casey. Mm-hmm. No, we haven't found Jarlo yet. Now we picked up everybody but him and put Larkin. That's right, Larkin was with him at that casket place. But don't worry, we'll get him soon. Yeah, I can tell you're not worried. I'll sit tight. Goodbye. Maddox worried, huh? Plenty. And he's glad to have us cops around him. When his heart's in danger, he says if we... Come in. Uh, we've got Andy Grollo and the last of his gorillas, Captain. You have? Yeah. They just walked into the front desk here, sir. Said they heard they were wanted. So they just walked in. Yeah, bring them here to me. Yes, sir. Well, that's that, Logan. Well, your worries are over for a while. I'm not so sure of that. I don't like any part of this business. Well, at least Maddox won't become a morgue case tonight, as Grollo hinted to that coffin salesman. Grollo and his hoods are going to be guests here for some time. Inside, you fellas. Uh, thank you, Sergeant. Good evening, Captain. Hello, Grollo. Well, well, well. Miss Williams, my old pal Casey, my buddy. Uh, uh, you folks know Foots Larkin? He's a business associate uh, of mine. Cut the comedy, Grollo. What was the big idea of that coffin gag you pulled this afternoon? What? You heard about that little joke of mine, Captain? It was a joke, uh huh? Well, what else could you think it was? I had no idea that news got around so fast that you put, sir. Uh, no, no, Andy. Gee, I, I hope our pal Nick Maddock ain't heard about it. Thought a joke would be ruined to fear. Your act isn't funny and I'm not laughing. Sergeant, we'll take these jokers into the boiler room where they can do their stuff under spotlights. Maybe we can improve their brand of humor. All right, come on. Now, look here, Captain. You can't Get come going. On. Uh, I'll come see on. you later, Miss Williams. Mm -hmm. Casey. Yeah. Well, Annie, let's be on our way. Oh, we may as well go back to the office. Uh-uh. We're calling on Nick Maddock. Maddock? Yep, right now. I have a hunch that little Andy's joke has been too well planned to miss. Well, what's the point of the joke? Come on. At Nick Maddock's apartment, we may find the point. Rallo said that coffin thing was just a gag. Uh, Casey? No, that's his story, Nick, yeah. Very funny. Answers a big laugh, don't it, Inez? I've been busting my sides ever since I heard about it, honey. Oh, the laugh's on Andy Grollo right now, Mr. Maddox. He and his men are having a session with the cops that will last all night at least. He was smart in giving himself up to the cops, Miss Williams. If I or my guys had come across them, it had been just too bad. Nick means the little Andy would have got his teeth knocked out. Nothing more. Sure, sure, I know. We know that law-abiding guys like Nick don't go in for the extreme forms of violence. Miss Williams, how about you and Casey having a drink or two on us? If them bodyguards and Nick's haven't drunk it all up. <laughs> no thanks, Miss Tally, but... I'd like to stick around here for a while and ask you and Mr. Maddox some questions. Questions? Oh, well, nothing too personal, just something I can use if the paper runs a story about this thing. Why should it run any story? Rollo's coffin gag is washed up before it got going. Well, in the newspaper racket, we try to prepare for possible emergencies, Nick. Same as you do in your, uh, business. Now, how about letting me shoot some pictures of you while Miss Williams asks her questions? I don't want any publicity. A guy in your spot gets it whether he wants it or not, honey. So be nice to these folks, and maybe they'll be nice to you. Sure, we like to give the kind of treatment we get. <laughs> well, okay. But well, take some decent pictures of me, Casey. The ones I see in the papers always make me look like a big, fat mug. Oh, well, well, I'll try to show you as you really are, Nick. You'll reveal the genuine you. What do you mean by that? He'll snap you at your best, Nick, if you'll help him. And you're a long way from your best with that crummy necktie on. Crummy necktie? This ribbon cost me 40 bucks. It ain't becoming to you, honey. Oh, next tie is, uh, uh, well... It ain't either, Casey. What do you think, Miss Williams? Them big yellow flowers are loud, ain't they? Well, they are a little noisy. They're in no class. Go back to your bedroom, Nick, and change to the one with the hand-painted bluebirds on it. That's a refined tie. I come on, like... I'll go with you and see that you do it right. Okay. You and Casey, come along, Miss Williams. You can ask some of them questions while Nick is changing them. All right. 
This is all jerky. Putting on a nut at The one with the bluebirds, honey, and fix it in front of the mirror, not just by the sense of feel. I'm standing right here at the door to watch that you do it correct. Ah, you dames, give me a pay. Guys, it's got to be managed one way or another, Miss Williams. <laughs> How right you are. Don't give this gal ideas, Inez. She'd have the same ideas if she'd been brought up the way I was. How... Oh, uh, where were you brought up, Miss Tally? That's one of the questions I've wanted to ask you. From a dirty, lousy mill town. My old man was a mill worker, a weaver. He was so poor, us kids were put to work as soon as our fingers were big enough to pluck at a loom. You see, I'm not one of those gals that tries to kid the folks that I come from a fine old family. Ah! Oh, it's that shot! He's got Nick. He's fallen. He was shot from that window. Keep away from that window, Inez. Whoever shot Nick may drill I you. I care. Inez! And then, now, don't you go to that window, Casey. Let me go, no. I see the gun, Casey. He's getting away over the roof. Get out of the way. Let me look. That's too late. Gone, but there's the rope ladder he used. I see that. Hey, what's uh, happened here? Hey, the boss. Well, well, well bodyguard, what's, what's you mugs turned out to be. The guy that shot Nick is on the roof. Get up there, all of you, and head him off. All right, all right come right, on, you guys. Right, let's go. Casey, is Nick dead? I'm afraid, Inez, that Nick is ready for little Andy's coffin. <laughs> My Nick, Captain. Why ain't he been found? Now, oh, please take it easy, Miss Sally. You know the roof of this apartment house connects with those of three other buildings at about the same level. The killer could have made his escape through any of those well, buildings. Find out where he went to ask him. I hate to ask the cop for anything, but I want the rat that shot my Nick. I want him to burn. My men are after him, and eventually they'll find him. If you'll calm down and help us, you say you saw the killer. What I saw can't be any help. It was only his feet and legs on that rope ladder up above me, and then he disappeared. They see you didn't see even the guy's feet and legs. No, huh? Logan, he was completely out of sight by the time I had to look out that window. You gotta find him, Captain. You got. Now, Miss Tally, suppose you go into another room and lie down. In your present frame of mind, you're only hindering my investigation. I guess you're right. Can I go to my own apartment? Your own apartment? It's three floors down. Nick didn't like to have me around this place all the time. Now go ahead. Now you go with her, Miss Williams. Okay, Captain. Come on, Inez. Uh, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Send a man downstairs with those girls and have him stand watch outside Miss Tally's apartment. I don't want her to leave it. Okay, Captain. You don't suspect Inez of this murder, Logan. Now, from what you told me, she couldn't be a suspect. Uh, I, I'm afraid she might get a crazy notion to go after the killer on her own. So I'll keep her under wraps tonight in case. Oh? Casey, I want you to show me exactly where you, Inez, and Miss Williams stood when that shot was fired. Well, we were just outside this bedroom door, Logan. Ann was here... I was back a little farther, about here. And Inez was directly in the doorway, leaning against that side of it. But you couldn't see the window where the shot was fired. No, I... I oh, nuts. What? Huh. I just stepped on something. The thumb tag. Wait a minute, let me dig it out of my shoe. Well, yeah, one of those things is on the floor. It's always pointed. That's right. Well, chances are you couldn't see anything worthwhile if that window had been in your line of vision. It was covered with those drapes, and the killer shot through the drapes. Yeah. You know, not many guys would have the guts or the ability to shag themselves up and down that flimsy rope ladder eight stories above the street. No, no, killer was a crack shot, too, Logan. Hanging onto that ladder, he planted a single shot in Maddox's back at just the right spot. Uh, Captain Logan. Yes, Sergeant? Bernstein here just found a gun on the ground below that window. Let's see it, Bernstein. Here you are, Captain. Miller dusted it for fingerprints right away, but they weren't any. That's always nice. It gets a forty-five, Logan. With one exploded shell in the cylinder. That's the murder gun, all right. The killer must have dropped it accidentally, Captain. Fell in a straight line from that window and landed in soft dirt. Oh, uh, I found something else. What? This length of fishing line. Fishing line? Yes, it was snagged on the bush not far from the gun. There may be no connection, but I think there is. Go on. Now, this line's in two pieces, joined together in a sheet bend knot. Uh, what kind of knot? A sheet bend, sir. I was in the Navy, you know that kind of stuff. Also, it occurs to me this killer has been a sailor, too. On account of how he could use a rope ladder so good. And the sheet bend is a sailor's knot. There is a connection. Hey, Logan, the killer may have used this fishing line to hang the gun from around his neck while he used both hands to come down the ladder. That way, he wouldn't have to dig into a pocket for it. Yeah. And going up the ladder in a big hurry, he could have snagged the line and torn it loose. Take it to the lab, Bernstein, and tell the props to get busy on it. Yes, sir. Yes. Neither line nor gun can be traced. We've still got a small lead, Casey. Maddox Killer must have been a sailor. Yeah, whatever he's been, he was only a hired hand tonight. 
And the guy who hired him is little Andy Grollo. Sure. And what a sweet alibi he and all his mob have got. When Nick Maddock got the works, every one of them was being held at headquarters. Captain Logan still ain't got nowheres on Nick Maddock's murder, huh, Casey? Nope, nowhere at all, Ethelbert. Gee, and it happened almost two weeks ago. I thought with all the swell clues the cops had, it'd be solved in a couple of days. What swell clues did the cops have? Well, to begin with, they knew Andy Grollo must have planned it and hired the actual killer. You've got to do more than know a thing when you charge a man with murder, Ethelbert. The law demands proof. That's why his attorneys were able to spring him out of jail only a few days after Maddox's funeral. Hmm. How about that fish line, the gun, and the rope ladder? Oh, they haven't been traced to the person who used them. Maybe they never will be. And millions of men have been sailors. And finding the sailor who used that rope ladder and who tied the knot in that fishing line, well, looking for a needle in that old haystack is easy by comparison. I never thought too much of that sailor idea, Miss Williams. You know, when I tie a couple of pieces of string together, I loop what you call a sheet bend as a matter of habit. But you? Mm-hmm. You've never been a sailor, Ethelbert. Me a sailor? <laughs> oh, goodness, no. Well, yeah. then... But my old lady used to do fancy work on a loom when I was a kid. She taught me how to weave, too. And what sailors call a sheet bend is exactly the same as a weaver's knot. Wait a minute, a weaver's knot? Uh-huh. Well, why didn't you tell me that before? Did you ask me? I... Annie, come on. Let's get over to the office. Huh? I want a good look at the pictures I took in Maddox's bedroom right after he was shot. Annie, look. Mm -hmm. Look here. In this picture, I pulled the drapes back from that casement in order to show the dangling rope ladder outside. Oh, yeah, I remember. Well, only one side of the casement was opened. You see the angle of the opening? Angle? No, no. Now, look. A gun clamped to the open side of that window would point directly at anyone standing in front of the mirror, as Maddox stood when he was shot. Casey! And a strong cord could have been looped around the trigger, then passed around the butt of the gun, and then further passed along the wall of the room behind the bed, and fastened to a thumbtack in the wall near where Inez stood. Well, you think Inez... Inez was taught to tie a weaver's knot when she was a kid, don't forget yeah. became part of her job to tie them. It's a kind of a knot she instinctively uses. And if you remember, Annie, I stepped on a thumbtack just inside that doorway. But she she couldn't have set off a gun trap while we stood within a few feet of her. Why not? All she had to do was pull on a fishing line that we didn't even know existed. And the purpose of the whole setup was that somebody should be with her to alibi her. Well, she did persuade Maddox to go into the bedroom and to fix his tie before that mirror. Yeah, and after the shooting, she made a beeline for that window. Before I got there, she had time to loosen the spring clamp and stuff it inside her dress. Well, naturally, the gun fell, carrying the fish line with it. And the line, only looped around the trigger, naturally, would fall free of it. Well, but Casey, that uh, rope ladder... It was never used. It was hung from the roof simply as a red herring. Oh. You see, there had to be believable evidence that Maddock was shot from outside. Well, I don't believe that Inez Tally has the brains to have planned such a setup. Oh, you underestimate that, gal. But I think the plan was mostly Andy Grollo's. Grollo's? Yeah, that coffin gag, Annie. It wasn't pure coincidence that he got himself and his entire mob a perfect alibi on the night Maddock was killed. Oh, no. We've never kidded ourselves about that. But instead of hiring a killer, as we thought, someone who wasn't a regular member of his gang, he had an inside track on Maddock's girlfriend. And she double-crossed Maddock because Grollo has more money, more brains, and better looks. Or maybe simply because she didn't like Nick's taste in neckties. I, I, I don't know. Female motives are anybody's guess. Huh. Well, how are you going to prove your pretty theory? Annie, Inez may have something in her apartment that'll tie her up with Andy Grollo. And, of course, you prefer to search your apartment without police assistance. Well, remember, Annie, exclusives earn bonuses for poor newspaper stiffs like us, and Christmas isn't too far away. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been in Inez's apartment, and the locks on her door should be easy for an accomplished housebreaker like yourself. <clears throat> Shall we, uh, Miss Williams? Tonight, Mr. Casey. <laughs> That 
lock was a cinch, Annie. No trouble at all. Close the door quick and relock it. All set. Okay. Now, where we begin? In her bedroom. Look for a clamp that might have held that gun and for anything that may connect Inez with Andy Grollo. Okay, her bedroom's in here. All right, we'll work it over together. You remember where the light switch is? I think so. Uh, yeah, I've got it. Good evening, uh, Miss Williams. Uh, Andy Grollo. And my old pal, Casey. Well, the surprise is on me as well as you. Oh, well, that's nice to know. When I left myself in the front door right after Ina's left. You see, I'd been casing her movements from the hall instead of down on the street. Due to, uh... Well, I wanted to search her place, too. Yeah, I see you'd made a start before we interrupted. You find what you were looking for, Andy? No, I didn't have time. Now, you two can help me. We're always willing to help a man who has a gun pointed at us. Oh, yes. I thought you'd be. What's here that you want, Andy? Same thing you wanted. Special kind of clamp. You know, this Ines Townley's a smart girl. Before she'd do a certain little favor for me, she made me write a letter I wouldn't like the cops to see. Yeah. I figured her as that kind of a businesswoman. Yeah, but brainy girls are dangerous, like snoopy newspaper people. A guy like me's better off without him. So after you two help me find the things I want for mine is, the three of us will stick around until she comes home. I'll get rid of her at the same time I lose you for keeps. Right here in her apartment. You'll be blamed for killing her, she for killing you. Stop that, Rod. Highness. You lousy double-crosser. No, no, don't shoot. Smart guy, Jenny. A fast thinker. Don't try to think your way out of this, you poor sap. I saw you watching my apartment from across the hall. You wouldn't have found what you wanted. I got them things put away in a safer place than this. What? But I've caught you and these newspaper stiffs robbing my apartment. I got a right to shoot all of you, and that's just what I'm going to do. No, don't, don't reach don't. for that gun. Uh, <laughs> Casey, they, they shot each other, Casey. Shot each other. They certainly have, and good. Oh. These double-crossing playmates both need coffins now. <laughs> Miss Williams, mm -hmm. did the cops find what Andy Grollo was looking for in Inez's apartment? Mm-hmm. In a safety uh, deposit vault, she had a letter he'd written that would have incriminated him plenty in the Maddox murder. Why did a smart guy like him let her have so much on him? Well, he thought he was smarter than he was, apparently, Ethelbert. And he met her very stiff terms because he was sure he could double-cross her, you see, and get everything back. Well, what was her big motive in playing along with Andy Grollo? Love, money, revenge, or just... No, well, we'll never know, really. And female motives are anybody's guess. <clears throat> See, Miss Williams, you called me a skinker the other day. What's a skinker? Yeah, Annie, you know, I looked it up, and the only definition I could find was a kind of lizard. I'm no lizard. Well, you didn't look far enough. In the big dictionary, you'll find it also means one who pours drinks. Oh, so I am a skinker. <laughs> but that sounds like... Hmm. Tonight's adventure was written by Alonzo Dean Cole. Stott Cotsworth played the part of Casey, Jan Minor was Anne, and John Gibson was Ethelbert. Next week, another adventure of Casey, crime photographer. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>